I'm joined now by our members of Parliament. In our Toronto studio, Liberal Krista Freeland. In St. John's, NDP defence critic Jack Harris. And here in the studio with me, the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Defence, James Bazan. And first question to you, Ms. Freeland. The Cabinet is looking at training Ukrainian troops and possibly sending arms. Is that what we should do? Uh, I think that training Ukrainian troops, uh, which we have been talking about, is really important. I think that in terms of sending arms to Ukraine, it's been very helpful to have people like President Obama, uh, Secretary of State in the United States Kerry, the new Defense Secretary Ash Carter, talking about it as a possibility. Obviously, it's not something that Canada can do on its own. It has to be a decision of our allies. Mr. Harris, does NATO need a new strategy of containment? In other words, to boost the defense budgets of the Baltic states and Poland and impose sweeping visa sanctions against the Russian elite. Are we doing enough? Well, just, I just came back from uh, four days in Brussels where the, all the NATO nations were present. We heard from the, uh, the, the General Breedlove, we heard from the Secretary General, and there's a strong consensus within the NATO nations uh, that something does have to be done in terms of uh, the, the military capability of the Baltic nations but to be better able to defend themselves. So all of the, the NATO reassurance mission and things that are happening, the readiness action plan is going to be there. Uh, so these things are happening and they're, they're important. Uh, but uh, there's no talk about visa restrictions. There is talk as well about uh, helping the Ukrainian uh, military in the medium term to strengthen itself to be able to uh, be able to protect itself. As far as uh, sending arms, I think there's also a strong consensus that uh, that, that uh, extreme caution should be used on that, uh, that that's, uh, the, the idea is to try to uh, help that the ceasefire help it work. We know that there's problems initially. Uh, there's still a strong hope that, that it can uh, that, that it can hold and every effort is going to be made to see that happen. Mr. Bazan, the government has been doing a lot of bragging about the economic sanctions that we put in, but there are two pretty significant friends of Vladimir Putin. One is uh, Vladimir Yukin, who is the head of the uh, railways in uh, Russia, and Igor Zhitchin, who is the head of the Russian-owned uh, 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 energy giant Rosneft. Both of those people have interest in Canada. Both of those people um, have been left off the sanction list in Canada because they have investments here. The Americans have dealt with them. Why aren't we? It looks, it looks like it's hypocrisy on our part. It's not at all hypocrisy. We, we've actually put forward sanctions on more than 270 Ukrainians, Russians and other entities that are responsible for the aggression that we're seeing in in Ukraine. Uh, you know, we will continue to, to ramp up uh, well, all why the... Why are these two gentlemen well, left and, off? Uh, look, we're, we're going to make sure that, that, that we're doing what we can to support Ukraine and as well as, as, as uh, you know, we, we act in our own national interest. But I can tell you that when we are dealing with, with, uh, with, with this Russian aggression, we're going to continue but to make sure that... why are these two guys left off? Well, we're making evaluations. Rosenfeld, the company itself, is on the list. And yeah. so, so we are going after the companies. We are going after those that, that, that are providing the, the ability for Russia to continue to bring this aggression against Ukraine. And, you know, we are uh, cooperating with Ukraine on a number of different um, levels, from, from helping with civil society, helping with training human rights lawyers and advocacy groups uh, and civil uh, organizations across the country. We're doing uh, training of judges to make sure that they are following the rule of law as laid out by the European High Court. And we are through the joint commission that we've signed with uh, the Ukrainian military in the United States on more uh, reform of the Ukrainian uh, military and uh, helping with uh, military police training so we can deal with some of the corruption issues that are within the military itself as well as across government. So, you know, we are providing all the resources that we can and we are looking at more uh, opportunities to cooperate with Ukraine and, and provide training. And, uh, and uh, we've already delivered a lot of non-lethal equipment. But, but, but we still got two bad guys that are that we're not dealing with anything even though the Americans have let me ask you miss Freeland a question yeah, can I, Robert yes can I, go ahead can I just jump in on on section in Yakunian yes um, I, I do really think it's essential for Canada to sanction these two men Igor Sechin and Vladimir Yakunian these are two 
very, very close comrades of Vladimir Putin's. They are people in his inner circle. They are people who are important to him. Before any sanctions were announced, I asked my friend Mike McFall, the former U.S. ambassador to Russia, who he personally thought should be on the sanctions list. And he said the very first person he thought of is Igor Sechin. That's how important he is. And look, this is an allied effort to raise the costs against Russia, and Canada loses its credibility with our allies when we don't sanction the two but, but people the same time, closest Christa, to Putin. Just because, and, and look, it, it makes us, it does make us look hypocritical, and it is hypocritical. Th th of then us. then the just, United States and the Brits are Monday. also hypocritical for not sanctioning about no, oh, 50 oh. or 60 other individuals that are on our list. Mr. Harris, yeah, I, I want to get into the these sanctions are, these issue, are the Bob, two if I can. Guys. Mr. Harris. Yeah, there's more about the sanctions. Canada's not taking any pain here. But, uh, you know, James just said that we're well, protecting we national have. interests. Uh, they, the, Ro the, Ro the Rostov organization is, is on the list, but you can still lend, banks can still lend money to them, they can still do business and all of that. We're not taking any pain. Or you look at some of the Eastern European countries who are hurting mightily because they do a lot of business directly with, uh, with uh, Russia and they're not allowed to do it. They're hurting and they're feeling that pain. But Canada is making a big long list, but it's really not taking any pain here, and I think that's... But, but that's not a fair comment either, Jack, because we, 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 well, we, no, uh, we, we, have, we have financial institutions and, and, and industries that, that support oil and grass extraction that are working in Russia that are no longer allowed to do business yeah. over there. So, so, so definitely it is causing an impact here in Canada, but more importantly, it, we are putting the, the pressure on Russia itself, and we know that they're in, in a full free fall with their economy, uh, but at the same time, we want to make sure that Putin but withdraws the troops. By, by that's not going after these two men, we help Bombardier, which has interest with with the, with the railway guy, and in terms of the uh, Rosneft, they have 30% ownership in one of the oil fields in Alberta. So it does make us look like hypocrites. But I have to go on. I want to because I want to ask Miss Freeland this. We've seen uh, a lot of, uh, of more evidence of how crazy and, and, and deadly uh, ISIS is with the beheadings of people, uh, burning people alive. Is it now time? Uh, for the Liberals to rethink its opposition to the uh, w uh, war in, in uh, northern Iraq, and should we be arming the Kurds? We have never been opposed to Canada playing a major role in opposing ISIS, and I think that no sane Canadian or no sane person can be opposed to that. Our opposition has been about where Canada can play the biggest role and have the greatest impact. And our view has been that humanitarian assistance is a place where Canada could play a bigger role here. So, M Mr. Harris, let me get you on the record now. The Liberals are still, it looks like they're going to oppose the extension of the mission. Uh, I'm assuming that the NDP uh, would also oppose that. And would you oppose uh, the West arming the Kurds? Well, I think that's two separate questions. We, you know, we support the coalition effort. Uh, we question, however, what role Canada ought to be playing here and whether or not the expenditures to date and the, uh, uh, the actions of the Canadian forces. Uh, we know the coalition has had some success, uh, but we, uh, we wonder whether, uh, whether Canada should be actually playing a, a greater role and a different role. We've got uh, one point, we've got two million uh, refugees now being uh, fed by the by the by Turkey 1.7 million in Turkey another 100,000 in Iraq and 200,000 in Syria we've got Lebanon we got Jordan uh, they're getting some help from the international community like 100 and 265 million but they've spent 5 billion dollars doing that and we question whether the what is the best role for Canada here we'll see what Mr. Uh, Kenny puts forward he's giving hints about what he's going to do but we'll see what he puts forward and uh, we'll have a look at it well, obviously, you guys are going to extend it. You're just not officially done it. So here you are, left well, again they, without they, the with the uh, with the opposition parties who are clearly not going to support you now. Well, and and we know that you know the, the only way you can stop the humanitarian crisis is by stopping ISIS itself. And so if we want to make sure that this genocidal organization, the Islamic State, is 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 is, is stopped in its tracks, and we're starting to have that impact now. That means that we. Uh, are going to continue to support the Iraqi security forces and, and work with the Kurdish Peshmerga. The training has uh, been paying off. Uh, the, the, the lethal equipment that we were able to deliver uh, that was donated by Albania and Bulgaria has definitely uh, been helpful. We want to make sure that they continue to succeed in defending their territory but also taking back territory that, that ISIL had, has captured. And uh, so we are looking at, at, at the options right now and going to be making a decision fairly shortly and, and, uh, and uh, bringing that back to Parliament for approval. And we'll look forward to that debate when it happens. Thank you, everybody. Greatly appreciated. Nice talking Thank to you. Thank you, Bob. Thanks, Bob. We'll have more.